welcome on back to the 430 Podcast. Glad to have you here again with us this week. As always, like and subscribe. We still want the subscribers. We like seeing you guys. It helps it get pushed to your YouTube feed. You know, follow us on Facebook. We tweet sometimes. Do that. And then for TikTokers out there, we we dabble. We're older. We're in our 30s, but we dabble in that. You know, we we can... We What's try, the dance move nowadays? We try to stay People hip with the TikTok fancy. trends, but, you know, it's kind of hard when you're in your 30s. But I just found out, our shitty AV guy just found out the other day that you can put a subscribe button at the beginning of your YouTube video. So it will be somewhere in this area early in the, the video button. click on it click the, click the button click the button somewhere i don't know where you can put it but <laughs> click it somewhere as we grow you grow that's how it works so anyways glad to have you guys here um nba finals wrapped up at the end of last week and we're going to talk a little bit about that the olympics are going on got a little low grade olympics fever mob trade deadline is friday at midnight and then uh you know there's a couple quarterbacks in the NFL that have some controversy brewing around them that we've talked about before, but we want to talk about it again. We're so getting close to football up. season, though, so it's even better now. All right, so the finals, you know, obviously everybody should be aware of the Bucks and Six. Um, what did you guys see come out of that? It could be a take after the fact. It could be a take because of the finals. Like, what have you guys seen come as a result of this finals? Well, Kelsey won our pick, so that's the first thing we need to lead with. <laughs> yep. We it's have true. to buy Kelsey a jersey of his choosing. And we have to I have to wear a Cubs jersey. I have to wear a Cardinals jersey. I might make you wear a Duke one though. I haven't decided. Tyler's gonna yet. wear a North Carolina jersey. I already am. See, I that's I'm getting it out of the way quick. <laughs> Doesn't, count. Doesn't count. <laughs> um, so finals. It, it's kind of what everybody's saying. Yeah. So recency bias is really taking effect right now um, with all this Giannis and where he ranks all time of, among all time players and then among power forwards. Um, this playoff run and especially the finals gives him so much more traction than he had, but we kind of need to pump the brakes a little bit. Okay, he had he had a classic playoff run, one of the all-time great playoff runs when it comes to individual performances. But he still he still had a couple choke artist times in the playoffs. He still failed to get over the hump a couple times. He may, who knows? He may have got the monkey off his back now, and it's going to be wide open for the next few years for him. Um, but Giannis put up tremendous numbers, willed his team to the finals, willed him to to a victory. Um, so he deserves some of the praise that he's getting. I think just a lot of people maybe need to need to pump the brakes just a hair, give him another year or so. But when you take his current resume and stack it up with the power forward all time greats, there is no questioning he's in he's in probably that top five now. You know, pushing it top ten at the ver at the very lowest top ten of all time now power forwards. Pushing top five, um, but the next couple years will tell a lot about Giannis. But good on him this year for getting that. And like I said on Facebook, there will be no more Giannis slander around me. You cannot do it. So how old is Giannis? He's 26. 26. He turns 27 in December. I, I see Giannis as being... I see him... Like, when it's all said and done, I see him being... He doesn't play like him, but I see him being right there with like Dirk Nowitzki. I don't, I'm not going to put him, you know, like Tim Duncan high, but I mean, he proved his worth. I mean, he did it all. He blocks. I mean, how many block shots did he have? A lot. With, with, I mean, the Suns did not have an answer for Giannis. That was the difference in the series. Giannis played great. Well, the thing about power you know, forwards too, is you have, you have Tim Duncan and then you have, well, you got Carl Malone and Tim Duncan. I think Duncan's quite a ways above Malone. But after that, you have Malone, Barkley, Dirk. Barnett. Dirk, Barnett, KG. KG yeah. I mean, had Carl Malone been on any of the teams that Tim Duncan was on, he'd have rings. And if you're on ball, she'd be your uncle. Carl Malone was just as talented as Tim Duncan. Carl Malone's maybe the most talented power forward to ever play the game. 
if we're talking about talent, it's a different thing. But accolades, there's no doubt Tim Duncan's the the top power forward. Um, it, it, talking about who the best player ever, that's a whole different debate that we can open up some other time. But if we're talking about accolades, Duncan's the best power forward of all time. We're not time. talking about accolades. We're talking about who's the best. You boys are going to piss me off talking about Duncan like that. <laughs> I did, I'm not saying Carl Malone's better than Tim Duncan. I'm saying he's in that conversation. Yeah, he. I mean, he is. When you're talking it's, talent, Tim and oh. Tim Duncan. Well, if you're talking about talent, KG is definitely in the conversation. Agreed. Okay, so Giannis or Giannis? Sorry, guys, my bad. Slip. Giannis. <laughs> he's a great player. Let's just go through his resume here real quick. He now added champion and Finals MVP. Back-to-back MVPs in 19 and 20. Defensive Player of the Year in 20. All-NBA five times. Most improved in 2017. He's been an All-Star five times. He's only been in the league eight years. He's 26 years old. He's only played game for like 10 years. And this is already what his resume is. His He's got a freak athleticism about him. That's why he's the Greek freak. Like... I don't think anybody in the NBA right now, their ceiling is as high as Giannis. Like, literally, barring injury, that dude, the sky's the limit for him. You know, because he's going to learn a shot as he gets into his 30s and can't beat and bang down there anymore. But he's still going to scare, he's still going to surprise you down there. Like, he he's somebody that, like, could be the face of the league when all this is said and done. Like, like, borderline logo status if he keeps on this pace so yeah. you brought up a good point and this is one thing that will determine Giannis's legacy when his athleticism goes because at some point it will what kind of player will he be i mean that's really what's going to determine Giannis's legacy um i mean right now i you're talking goat and it's a, it's a, I get why people are bringing it up but it's a little bit early for goat talk but you bring it up um, for mahomes how is this any different? Well, the difference is Giannis doesn't have a shot. I, I'm just saying. Yes, Giannis he does. Doesn't. He's his resume at 26. He's 26 is... years old and two MVPs, okay, okay. defensive player of the year. You guys, are, you guys are misunderstanding me. Giannis does not have a jump shot, not a shot at being the oh. goat. Giannis does not have a jump <laughs> shot. And to be the greatest asshole player of all time, you've got to have a jump shot. He's like, we're, we're talking about the greatest basketball player of all time, and you're talking about a guy who. Pretty much, you're going to dare to shoot at 18 feet. And I'm not yeah, putting so, on a slander, but you guys are talking about the greatest basketball player of all time. Because it takes yeah. him one step to close that to nine. Yes, Carl. Yes, Carl. And, you made a good point. You can't You can't say Mahomes. It's too early to say Giannis is the GOAT and say Mahomes is the GOAT. You're right about that. Kelsey, I agree with you in the fact that if you look at Giannis, you're going to compare him to a guy like LeBron, right? I mean... Who else would you really compare him to? 1995 Shaq? No. LeBron. All right. We're going to compare him to LeBron. Giannis is still a step or two behind as far as it comes to shooting the ball. And, you know, when he does lose his athleticism, I agree with Kelsey on that. That, I mean, it's, I think, I don't, I don't see him developing that great of a jump shot where he loses athleticism. He's still the same player. So I see him a tier behind like LeBron and guys like that. But this was his finals. It kind of reminds me of the 2011 run that Dirk Nowitzki had. I'm I'm not sold that Giannis will ever win another one. Well, it's hard to do. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. ask Carl yeah, Malone. Like, yeah. So, I mean, even if he doesn't win another one, his resume is, it's not GOAT status, obviously. We all agree that. Giannis is not the GOAT right now. But... You know, he, he's, you can't say that he's not on pace to have a shot at it. And Kelsey's got a point. You look at the, I think if you average it out, the three best players, what we would all say, Jordan, LeBron, and probably Kobe, Shaq, Kobe. Bird. But I think we all agree, Jordan, Braun, Kobe, the three best players of all time. You're right. They all have jump shots. They could all shoot the ball. But then after that, you got to factor in Bird somewhere in the top 10, but you got Kareem, you got Wilt, you've got Bill Russell, you've got Shaq. Those guys couldn't shoot the ball. They're still in the conversation. There's a bunch of people that'll say Kareem's second behind Jordan. Like, 
think Kareem can shoot a, the ball any better than it's a, Giannis? It's a different game now. It you, is. You could You're get by wrong. without shooting back then. And, you know, Giannis, I don't, a lot of us didn't think he'd win one in Milwaukee. So he's already proved us wrong once. So, you know, maybe he does develop that jump shot. Maybe he does. I think it's a long shot. He has a shot, but I think it's a long shot. I well, don't every, disagree with that one bit. Everybody we listed on that power forward list besides Tim Duncan. So Malone never won one. KG only won one. Barkley never won one. I mean, you know, if, so if for Gian- Giannis to have Kirk one, won I mean, that, one. yeah. If your argument is power forward, I think he definitely could be the greatest power forward of all time. I think that's that's a just that's a definite possibility. I know you're a huge Tim Duncan fan, but I think as far as the greatest at a position, I think power forward would be the position is probably the easiest position to become the greatest player of all time at. Um, um, but anyways, Mahomes slander. It's not football season yet. I can I can talk about that later. Um, as far as I think that Giannis's dominance and this, I'm I know this is going to start a whole another conversation that everyone's going to get worked up about. Giannis's dominance just kind of points to how the league is called in today's day and age. Because Giannis, in the, even 15 years ago, would not be as dominant as he is right now playing the way he does. Um, like, he, he bullies people, and he... Think about Giannis trying to go against, in the night, or against guys like Shaq, or Tim Duncan, or there's so much more size in the paint. Like, he would not be able to bully people like he does now. Well, no, but he'd just pull them out to the three-point line and go around him. He's You're forgetting how athletic he is, too. Like, but he can do it either way. He bullies people that are smaller than him, and then if you got someone bigger on him, DeAndre Ayton takes him out, and he's too long and athletic. They wouldn't but, be able to stop him. But there wouldn't be a five-guard name. There'd be a four-guard name. There'd be another guy sitting in the paint waiting for him. That's what I'm saying. There's way more size. It's just, I, it's no disrespect to Giannis, but it's just how the... He, he benefits from how the game is today, which a lot of guys do, but. But talking about that power forward list that we're talking about, the, the goats of the power forward, I think of that list, Duncan and Garnett are the only guys that can even slow him down. He's going to go right around Malone, Barkley, uh, McHale. He's going to go right around those guys and, and just dump it? the piss out of the ball. So. Are you guys forgetting Carl Malone? Right now? And how good he Malone. was? I just said Giannis would dominate him. And, I and, I forgot. and, and vice versa. Uh, Giannis, Malone would score on Giannis, despite Giannis being a defensive player of the year. Malone's still going to get his because Malone was that good. But well, Giannis is, well, a, they call him the Greek freak for a reason. He's seven foot tall, runs like a deer, no pun intended on the team he plays for. He is, he's... I made that joke last week. I did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> he he jumps just about as well as anyone in the league. He's fast. He's quick. He's strong. He, I mean, he's built like a brick shit house. So, I mean, it's just... So before we get too far into this style of basketball, which I assume we're getting ready to talk about when we get to the Olympics, um, do you guys have any takes on the Suns or... Yeah. Chris Paul being the only person to ever lose four series up to O. Well, anything there? Yeah, I was I was getting ready to lead into this. We're talking about Giannis's legacy going up. Chris Paul's is going down. I mean, he didn't show up for a few of the games. He was I you mentioned he's blown four two O leads. When I mean they made it to the finals this year, but when Chris when things get going tough, you see a different Chris Paul. He starts rushing his shot. He's he when Chris Paul's going good, he's playing at his own pace. And he he's not he's sped making up, the pace. And yeah. he's under he's control. One of the best players at his own pace, actually. Watching him in that finals, it was he felt over it looked like he felt overwhelmed. Like he was speeding himself up, missing ten footers with no one on him. I mean, that guy's gotta be considered somewhat of a choker now, I think. And that's what his legacy is going to be. Now, he's still a great player, and I've always liked him. But it was disappointing to see that because you know that that's what he's going to be remembered for. If he doesn't make another finals, which chances are he won't, that's what he's going to be remembered for. I think he'll probably make it next year. But that's neither he's here nor there. He's in a free agent. In L.A. But, um, yeah, that's the thing is – is he didn't help his own legacy there. 
it, it you can't argue that his legacy went up at all. Um, he did make the finals, but he didn't show up in all but what two of the games in the finals. He showed up for two of the six. Um, my personal opinion, just by watching the game start to finish, I I think pressure got to him. I really think the pressure of him being in the finals got to him, and and it caused him to choke. He that was not the CP3 we've watched for the last how 18 years or however long he's been in the league 16 years that was not the same chris paul he was rushed he is he is one of the most collected guys there is yes he whines and cries to the ref but that guy plays his own style of basketball and that's one of the things he's is he's consistent he plays the same way you can't get him sped up you can't you know and that's exactly what the bucks did the bucks had him sped up like you guys said he was doing stuff he normally doesn't do he was when he got stripped by Drew on that one sh- on that one possession. I don't remember what game it was, but Drew was just up in his shorts and he just took off, tried to go around him instead of just playing like he normally plays. And I hate it. I was hoping I would have rather seen Giannis win than CP3, but I wouldn't have been upset if CP3 won that series. But that it just it's it's not a good look how it went down for him. Just not a good look for. Him. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you guys said on CP3. Um, to answer your question about the Suns, the Suns are a very good young team. Um, I don't know if Chris Paul will be there next year, but I think that um, the Suns have... I think the Suns will be back as long as they stay together at some point. I don't know if it'll be next year, but they will be back at some point. They Campaign. strike me... with Without Chris Paul, they strike me as a 7 or 8 seed. Ooh, no. I mean... Yeah. No. I no. Golden State's going to be better next year. Thought, yeah, Golden State. On second thought, just let's all stop comparing Devin Booker to Kobe Bryant. Devin Booker is not Kobe Bryant and never will be. He's not that hmm. he's not that good. Which which one of us compared him to Kobe? It was There's, it was a fact. I'm not on talking on just directly the, to you guys. I'm talking the to Roy, our the Royal Paul. We the people yeah. that want, listen to us. The frog in our <laughs> pocket. Yeah. Wait, hold on. The one thing we have to do, though, is we have to we have to publicly apologize to Chris Middleton. You are a top 25 player. In the we, I missed that sorry. one. We, <laughs> we do I not have to apologize that. to him. You two do. You guys. Don't point at me. Hey, you had him on the fringe. It was pretty close where you had him. I don't know if you'd have been top 25 in yours either. He's not top 25. Ooh. Ooh. No, I'll stand I, by. Bro, it. I disagree. No, you you Thank have you. to. You, you guys are overreacting to... off one. You guys are overreacting off one run. Do we Dude, all? He... Okay, hold on, hold on. You're talking about Giannis potentially being the goat, and there was a discussion of who the MVP of the finals. There was, was no discussion who the MVP was. It was Giannis all the way. Just because some NBA player tweeted it that wanted Chris Middleton to win it, there was no discussion. Giannis did everything. Middleton dropped 40. Who had the highest plus minus, and just be this trick question, who had the highest plus minus of anybody in the playoffs? We're still talking about one run. By Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. I was going to say. Had the Drew. highest that plus Drew minus. Drew Holiday. He played the his X Factor. Butt off. He Once the X again, X-Factor. somebody who. <laughs> Who gets disrespected constantly? I'm but, the one hey, that said that Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton might not even be the second best player on that team. I think he's referring back to when we say Uber two or whatever that segment we did was. Yeah, yeah. Drew Holiday played great, um, and the dude flew to Tokyo and is picking guys up at 94 feet in the first game. There, like NBA Finals, Tokyo, picking right up where he, he was. The and, best player against France in a losing and Middleton effort, didn't even play against, against France. France. You know, because he's probably gas from being a top 25 player in the NBA. <laughs> okay, so can we put to rest, Dre, I hope you watch this episode, that there is any way, shape, or form that C.J. McCollum is better than than Chris Middleton? That's out the window now, isn't it? Yeah, you're t- I'm taking Chris Middleton every time. Okay, though. just making yeah. sure. that was yeah. Middleton's a two-way player. McCollum... I mean, McCollum compares to him offensively, but defensively, it's not even close. But McCollum craps the bed in the first round against the Denver Nuggets. Chris Middleton yeah, goes off in the finals against the Suns. That That's the difference that I'm trying to make. Chris Middleton's crapped the bed in the playoffs, too, before. This was one playoff run. 
They had it yeah, going. Yeah, but he didn't do it for my favorite they team. They had it going. So. It's how Next year, one play the, Bucks could very, the Bucks could very well lose in the first round, and then you're saying, I mean, it, it's just one playoff round. All righty. Well, the Olympics are going on. The 2020 Olympics happening in 2021 in Tokyo. We are all aware of all that situation with COVID. Um, before we get into some of the sports, I have a little question for you guys. What is your favorite oddball sport in the Olympics? Like, if it's on TV, you find yourself watching it, and then an hour later, you're like, why am I still watching this? What's that sport for you guys? And it could be winter or summer. I don't care. But... We can't go with the consensus. America's favorite oddball sport. Curling. I think that's everyone's number one, isn't it? So we, yeah. we're picking our number two, I, was I guess. I trying to think of the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, and we mentioned this. Carl, you brought this up. I think it was just in our group chat the other day. But the what was the name of the course they were on? Velodrome? Uh, yeah, Velodrome. Velodrome. That's the, the speed cycling on the short tracks, the quarter mile tracks, or less than that, eighth of a mile tracks, whatever they are with the high inclines all the way around, that's my favorite. Because they just get in a straight line. It's almost like NASCAR for rich people with bicycles. Just They just, uh, I, it's just exciting. And they're short races. Um, so mine is handball. Because does it not look like any of the four of us could go play handball and compete <laughs> in the Olympics? Like, awesome. I actually was thinking about saying handball. <laughs> I'm dead uh, serious. Like, it looks like you're in middle school when they say, all right, three point lines for dodgeball. That, that's what it looks like. You're just <laughs> running up there, overweight, tossing balls. I mean, that would be my choice too. It would be handball. I was watching it the other day and I watched it forever. Um, I guess that was yesterday. Um, but I was looking up obscure sports and I didn't know race walking and trampoline. Dude, were, watch race walking. Know, race walking. Your knees like trampoline. bend backwards doing that. They're like Squidward is- walking the whole time. Trampoline is just jumping on a trampoline and doing flips. <laughs> like what Simone Biles does, but Except with a trampoline. a trampoline. Yeah. yeah, with the trampoline. And then, you, just, you know, skateboarding's in the Olympics this year and surfing. Apparently, the so, U.S. is crap in the bed in skateboarding because that's all like said. We've really failed as a country because we no longer dominate skateboarding. An Olympic sprinter tested positive for marijuana. How did a skateboarder or a surfer not? <laughs> Come on now. On, dude. I'm going with I'm going with synchronized swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to watch it. I'd I'd fall asleep. Who's the troll? <laughs> I tell you what, water polo. Watching that makes me tired. Yes, those those guys That's work for sport. that. I want to eat a turkey sandwich with Doritos and take a nap after <laughs> I watch them <laughs> play water polo. Yeah, uh, gives you that Thanksgiving then, Day then, feeling. And then table tennis is insane to watch. I mean, oh, there's so that's so wild, crazy. Badminton. Have you ever watched uh, Olympic badminton? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Those guys are aggressive, man. Beach volleyball is fun to watch too, but it's a little oh, more competitive. Yeah. It's kind Why of. Why like is it fun to watch? <laughs> there's guys that play beach volleyball. Oh, oh, you're talking about the guy <laughs> beach volleyball. Yeah, I, I, I that wasn't where my guys. head went. <laughs> there's girls. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, you should watch it sometime. It's pretty athletic. Okay, so here's my thing about the Olympics. Not has anybody has anybody watched the three on three basketball in the Olympics yet? I saw clips of it. I wish I would have watched it. I really yeah. think I honestly think the what 2013 Zoo Crew could go out there and compete. You would think okay, so you would think with the with the three on three team that okay, so you've got your your top tier players on the on the five on five teams, the men's teams. You would think they would roll up there with um, Jalen Suggs, Chet Holmgren, a few of those guys, the uh, the dude from uh, Gonzaga, Timmy. You'd think they would roll up with those guys and just dominate that, which the U.S. isn't playing in the three-on-three. But when you watch it, it's like they pulled, like they went to the local uh, Japanese Gus Macker and was like, hey, come on, we need three guys, let's go. Like, it, they're not. They're they're still good basketball players. They would beat ninety nine percent of people who ever touched a basketball in their life. But when you compare them to NBA players or college players, I would say, like they're, they're uh, just send Trey over. Send Trey with the three of us, and it's it's a wrap, dude. At thirty four years old, haven't touched a ball in years. 
we could do- they're bad they're bad when you compare it to high level basketball they're bad that's all there is to it i all need right. to watch it uh but speaking of 5 on 5 basketball united states men lost their first team or first game to france which france has a pretty good team do you see any trouble for them down the road or will this because they've lost three out of four now counting the last three exhibitions too do you see trouble for them down the road or are they gonna pull their heads out of their rears that's the first official olympic loss since 2004 when they got third place at the olympics they are this is kind of backwards but they are in trouble but they will be fine they have just enough talent they're going to medal. I'll put it that way. They're going to medal. They're just too talented not to medal. Um, but when it comes to Slovenia, France, uh, Australia, like if they see those guys in the medal rounds and the playoff rounds, they're in trouble. Bam Adebayo is a great, great basketball player, an all star, but he's six foot nine. France was. France was running seven foot six eleven six nine the other day at one point in time, which we're running seven foot with KD, but it's a different kind of seven foot. It's a essentially KD is six foot six, is how he plays the game, and he's great at it. But I digress. We're gonna anybody with some size, we're gonna be in trouble, especially if we can't get stops and turn that into transition and use our athleticism and our our lack of size. We're gonna be in trouble. But, I definitely think they'll they'll mesh a little bit better. I mean, they're going to get better as it goes on, you would like to think. And I don't think they're a lock to win it. Obviously, they're not a lock to win it all. But, I mean, you got to think they're favorites to make top four or five when it's all said and done. Yeah, I don't think they'll have a problem doing it. Well, if they were to play again, Fournier is not scoring 28. So, Yeah, that's that's actually terrible. Um, So... We talked about this a little bit in the group chat, um, and you guys knew I was going to bring it up. Um, today's modern basketball, NBA basketball, has made us not suited to play in the foreign game. One, size. Obviously, other other teams are bringing size to the game. When In the NBA, it's no big deal for your center to be 6'9", 6'10". Um, like he said, 7 foot, 6'11", 6'9", across the front. You don't see that in the NBA anymore. Um, but another thing is how they call the game. So I'm just going to throw a couple things at you. Durant against France, 4 for 12 for 10 points. Lillard, 3 for 10 for 11 points. Um, where was Booker? Booker Durant one for also six. got in foul trouble real early. 1 for 6 for 4 points. The best player on the team was Drew Holiday. Um, they, he's I mean, physical. There was, there was times when you were watching, like if you watch clips from that game, like it's almost like some of the guys don't know how to play against somebody who plays defense. And that's like a stupid thing to say, but they legit don't know what to do when someone plays defense on them. When they get in them, some of the guys don't know how to react. Like it's crazy to even watch. Like you're like, these are the best basketball players in the world. And they don't know what to do when somebody's in them. Like they have no clue. They think they're going to go to the hoop and just throw it up and get a foul called. And it's not working like that for them. They scored 76 points in a 40 minute game. Yeah, it was awful. It was horrible to watch. And and I brought this up for just a split second the other day. You guys know who my man is. I've got his jersey hanging over there. I've got his poster hanging up over here. I wear Portland Trailblazer stuff because of Dame. But And I will never disrespect Pop's greatness. You know, he was my pick for greatest coach of all time. But why is Dame on the floor in the second half? He clearly acted like he did not want to be there that day. His dauber was down all day long. He was he was playing lazy every time he got the ball. You know, logo Lillard, Dame time, all that stuff that he gets credit for. He didn't he had the opportunity to do that and didn't even take the shot. It's one thing if you take the shot and miss, but he was which you have Durant out there with you. He he was giving the ball to Durant a lot. But if I'm Pop, if I see that out of my potentially second or third best player, take him off the floor. Like, you got other guys. Heldon Johnson has been great for USA so far, and he set that entire fourth quarter pretty much. You're telling me that young guy isn't hungry for his opportunity to show out? Put him out there. He's going to make something happen. He's just as hungry as all those foreign players to play against the U.S. So It's hurting, hurting I, Pop's legacy. 
I I blame Pops a little bit because of it. Um, not his legacy, but I I blame Pops <laughs> for that loss a little bit. But uh, but it's more so on Damon and, and KD. They're the two best players on the team, and they didn't come through. Beal was nowhere to be seen. Booker tried to make things happen and couldn't. We had no post presence to throw the ball into the paint and get something like. Well, Beal was nowhere to be seen because he went home. <laughs> oh, he did. Who am I it thinking didn't about he? then? It, it, yeah, Beal left the team. Yeah, yeah. he did. Uh, who was the other super out there? Levine, uh, Booker. Zach Levine joined him. Middleton played five minutes. Tatum. Tatum, yeah, Tatum didn't wasn't like he didn't seem like he wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there's rough. just some real changes that are going to struggle for. They're always going to struggle. But what? why couldn't the United States find 12 to 15 guys who truly, truly love the game of basketball? And they can play in the NBA, but the United States team is their first priority. You know, they could still make that money playing in the NBA. And if they're 15 deep, not all 15 of those guys are going to be in the finals making deep playoff runs. Like. Why can't we have an NBA roster that's all the time so they could play these FIBA rules more and possibly do better? Because the United States has the best athletes in the world. There's no disputing that. So why can't we find 15 guys who love the game to do that? Well, you'd have to pay them more. They could play in the NBA. For that level of commitment, though, you would have to pay them more. We're the richest country in the world. Pay them. Yeah, it, I don't know. That's a good question. I I think it's all. I I just think it's. I mean, I mean, it's an idea in theory. I just think that's. I mean, a I'm lot sure if you took 15 G out. League players and made them play FIBA rules consistently all the time, they would be a damn good team in the on in the world scale. So, Truly yeah, would. That's an that's idea. how deep make the United the States League, is. Make the G League geared toward FIBA rules instead of NBA rules, but then that would hurt trying to make guys ready for the NBA. I think that would be the biggest conflict is. NBA wouldn't want it because these guys would get ready playing yeah. this way. And these guys are NBA trying to make an way. NBA career. So they're trying to develop their games after an NBA career. Well, how many foreign players are in the NBA right now that grew up playing these FIBA rules that are doing great? Like, yeah. you know, the Giannis, they're also Giannis finals the one or two people on their team only play in the NBA. The rest of their team plays FIBA rules. So it's just a different situation. Well, I I don't mean like, yeah, they're in the NBA right now, but when they were 17 years old, they grew up playing FIBA pools. Yeah. I mean, mean? I mean, it's not, it's impossible to do, but I think here's what they should do. In the eyes of the NBA or in the eyes of people in the USA, they're like, hey, we're trying to get these guys to the NBA to be good, not get them to be good on the world scale. The answer is to, for the NBA to adopt the FIBA rules and then just, we're all good. They could adopt the goaltending rule at least. That would help them out some. I mean, like I mean, any any time a Spaniard knocks that ball off the rim, everybody's just standing there looking at him, like you can do that. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, some of the rules in the NBA have got like the fouls, for example. We all have talked about it many times. Like it it shouldn't be the way it is anyway. But they've done it at the college game too. Now you can't have your hand on a guy, so that's just all of America now. You can't hand check at all. Like that's that's just how it is now. Basketball in America. And I've. None of us have ever competed at that level of basketball, so it's kind of one of those things of, you know, essentially barstool talk about what we would do. But I don't understand how, you know, so the game's more physical, but why does that completely disrupt? What You're telling me if somebody's got their hip on, or their hand on Katie's hip, he still can't go around them? Same with Dame. It's like they, it's almost like a mental thing to me, that they're like, oh, I haven't seen this before. I mean, Durant... It, I don't know. It's just, you're, you guys are right. It's different. It's more physical. It's harder for the players to score. But there, there shouldn't be a rule set in the game uh, outside of murder that keeps that team scoring how many points did they score? What did we end up scoring? I think it was 76. Yeah, yeah was, 76. I knew it was in the 70s. So In yeah. a 40 minute game. I mean, you've got, you've got Durant and Willard who almost averaged that put together during the NBA season. And then you've got 10 other all-stars on the team. Like, it, and then Luca goes out there and scores 48 by himself. Because he grew up playing FIBA rules. Yeah, and, and he's, he's really, he I mean, young. 
He's the star. You of do that need show. Trey Young. Trey Young got Isaiah Thomas on that team. But we're not going to talk about the Olympics without talking about potentially the greatest athlete of all time, Simone Biles. Um, how ridiculous is it that she's being she's, penalized? She is not a human. She's that's, being penalized. So that's one of the for, dumbest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, the Olympics literally isn't like giving her extra credit. They're saying, hey, don't do this because it's too dangerous for other athletes. And so I say the greatest athlete of all time because she probably is. Gymnastics is one of the oldest sports or oldest organized sports. You have running and then probably running to the toilet after you eat something risky and then gymnastics. <laughs> Those are like three oldest sports in the world. And she is the greatest to ever do it by a land. It's not even like there's nobody ever, even in the same conversation. How wild is that, that she's not allowed to do what she wants to do because it's, oh, that'd be too risky for other athletes. Piss on them. So for Piss those of you who don't know, they basically told Simone Biles she can't do stuff because if other people try to do it, they wouldn't be able to. And they would get injured trying to do it. So it's not fair that she can do it and other people can't do it. So she won't get points for doing those moves. That I don't, I like don't want to be the old head. Trophy. That's, oh, that's what I was getting ready to say. I don't want to be the old head, but it's particip so, participation no, that, trophy. That is seriously one of the stupidest things I've, I've ever that heard. That finish that she put, she levitated. She On that floor routine? Human. She is yeah. not human. She was 10 feet in the air. She had Harry Potter's ass up in the stands casting some if, sort of spell on her. And I swear she's to God. only like four foot eight and she's 10 if, foot in the air. If like, there was a basketball hoop on the floor, she could have put her whole body through the hoop coming down. That's how high she was. Maybe Team USA needs her. Yeah. Let her get a running back <laughs> handspring or whatever it's called. Ask Dakota what that's called. And we just it'll need to put like, her out there. It'll be like the first Mighty Ducks movie when they had the girl that could figure skate. They'll just have her out there doing <laughs> stuff to distract yep. them. Yeah. No. And she, I hopefully, hopefully Simone Biles will stay doing what she's doing. She'll end up winning out in the end. No, I mean, she's she's leading the individuals. The United States team is in second to the Russian Olympic Committee because of drugs. But <laughs> like, you know, the, 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 she will win the gold individually unless she, heaven the, forbid, gets and injured. And the so. best thing, the best thing about Simone Biles too, other than her just absolute gift athletically that she is, she is so personable and likable and so good at her sport. She gets, she gets five-year-old girls to watch her and she gets 30-year-old dudes to watch her. She gets teenage boys to watch her. She gets old ladies to watch her. Like she's just a polarizing figure. She's so good. So many people have their eyes on gymnastics. Gymnastics is fun to watch regardless. They're, they're pretty freakish in what they do athletically. But, uh, but Simone Biles, like she just takes it to another level. She's great for the sport. She's as good for gymnastics as anybody is for any other sport. Um, and it's just, Oh, you're all grandma. The grandma, your grandma watch it. Simone. Yeah, tell your grandma. And she's got her own emoji too, which is a goat wearing a leotard doing some sort of gymnastic move. I don't remember what it was, but that's pretty cool too. All right. You guys have anything else on the Olympics? The MLB trade deadline's coming up this Friday night. And the um, soccer team beat uh, Jamaica one nothing. MLB trade deadline's coming up this Friday night. Cody's going to have to probably get rid of half of his closet. Um, but we we did have one big move that I wanted to point out. The Padres got Adam Frazier, who, if you're not aware, is leading the MLB in hits this year. And for a team that dangerous to get a guy that can rake, like or not necessarily rake, but that a guy that can put it in play like Frazier is crazy. When you're staring down Tatis Jr., Machado, Frazier, Pham, Hosmer, Cronenworth, like that's that's sick. Like that is not a fun lineup to go against. Yeah, so Adam Frazier. Frazier might not rake, but he's gonna be on base for all the guys who yeah. do rake. Like that's that's gonna just help them in the long run. Frazier's a Frazier is not your typical MLB player today's game. All he does is get base hits. And his if his contact on MLB the show isn't ninety nine, I don't know who should be because that dude I mean, I've you know, I've watched the Braves play him. That that dude is hard to get the ball by. He puts the ball in play. That'll be a big I think that's a huge pickup for the yeah, Padres. Huge for the Leave it when leave I it to the Pirates to try to raid their best player though. 
Oh, these yeah. people are they these people that money. are Pirates fans out here are so just down all the time. They're like, "Well, we traded away the farm again." Just but every, it's almost every every football year. season. The Royals are trying to trade Whit Merrifield. It's no different in Kansas City. And Duffy, uh, I think. I think Duffy's probably gone by Friday as well. Yeah, Merrifield and yeah. Duffy. But if you're the Royals, you can at least say, "Hey, look, we did this and we won a World Series. We're going to do it again." <laughs> yeah, I guess. In um, the first years. thing I thought about when I saw that trade was we need to start a new MLB The Show um, franchise so I can be the Padres again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you're interested in playing in a show league with us, let us know. I'll put this on TikTok. We'll get one going. Um, uh, but an- another fun one I saw, unless you had Adam Frazier take, Cody. No, go ahead. Uh, before we get into Cubs, because Cubs just has a large chunk of my note sheet here. Um but Trevor Story, so Trevor Story, his contract ends here at the end of the year. Um, he's been a top five shortstop in the league for a few years now. Uh, I really think that he goes to Oakland, to the A's, and return for Elvis Andrews. Uh, Elvis Andrews hasn't really produced. I think that's going to probably be the biggest name to move by Friday. Because it doesn't... So yeah, the Rockies could sit on him and get compensatory picks, but like... It, that doesn't benefit them as much as kind of moving some salary around like they did with Nolan Arenado. And I think the whole, uh, the split difference between home and away for the Rockies, I think that's kind of going away. So we saw Arenado, he's doing just as well as he was doing in Colorado in St. Louis. DJ LeMahieu is doing just as well outside of Colorado. So I don't think that's as big a factor as people want to say. I think Trevor Story would be good no matter where he goes. And I think he goes to the A's by Friday. I, I, I mean, you still gotta, that. you still gotta hit the ball hard. I mean, yeah, whether, whether you're, you're in Denver, it out at, yeah, you still gotta hit the ball. You gotta barrel it up. I mean, if you're barreling it up, you're gonna hit anywhere. So my one thing big... that's interesting. Go ahead, Cody. No, you you go ahead. I was changing. Well, one thing's interesting for me because the Braves are four out against the Met. The Braves are four out on the Mets. The Braves and Mets play five games this week before before Thursday. They have a doubleheader and they're playing a. They had a four game series, so if the Braves could go get some of your players, Cody, like Chris Bryant, maybe throw in a little bit there, they might be in business. I will have I Chris Bryant's Braves jersey if that happens. Eight games, the Braves could close the gap. Yeah, the so, problem is I don't see Bryant going to the Braves. I see him going to the Giants or the Mets. Which isn't great. But how did the Giants? When did the Giants become so good? They've been Weren't supposed they to be off last since year? May. But so my big pickup, it's not not it's not my best pickup. It's not a big pickup. It's the most surprising pickup for me. Before we go into the Cubs, is um, Nelson Cruz to the the Rays. That's so not Tampa Bay. Like, they just kind of, like, roll with their farm roster, bring guys up. They do it well. They do it as well as anybody. Um, and then they bring in a, a big-time bat there for them, which, you know, World Series last World Series lost last year. It it could be something to put them over the hump or get them back there again anyway. Um, that was a good pickup for me, but just see, the the uh, it's just so competitive all around this year. The AL is competitive, the NL is competitive. The NL West is competitive, put it that way. There's a there's a lot of teams on the fence though that don't know if they're buying and selling. It's, I mean, it's like that every year, I guess. It'll be interesting to see who does. Well, there is one team for sure on that sell list. Um, the Chicago the, Cubs. The Chicago. I'm Cubs telling you, it's are... it's the media narrative, dude. It's the media narrative. They've got plans well, just to re-sign everybody. They ain't getting rid of anybody. The, the media wants to see all their players go somewhere else. It's all fake news, dude. Heath, fake Heath news. Ledger's Joker is in your lobby with a bus, bud. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to end well. Um, so the, really the only one, so there's six guys kind of on the list. Rizzo, Bryant, Zach Davies, Chafin, Kimbrell, and Javi Baez. The only one I see staying is Baez. I think they ship the rest of them. And I know that's a fire sale, but I really, really do. You know, that the Yankees have their eyes on Rizzo, kind of the Red Sox do too. And I hate that. I don't like, as much as I don't like the Cubs, piss on the Yankees and Red Sox, dude. Like, 
I hate those franchises, so I don't want to see Rizzo go there, but they've got their eyes on him. Bryant to the Giants, or with a package with Kimbrell to the Mets. Davies possibly to the Mets, Chafin possibly to the Mets, and then Kimbrell could go to the Dodgers. Like those are all real possibilities by Friday. And that's that's a fire sale if I've ever seen. So the Yankees really want Trevor Story added to that roster. But if you're the Cubs, do the Cubs must have just zero farm system to speak of. Is that why they're trying yeah. to get rid of everybody? They and just yeah. replenish that farm system? They gave it all away in uh two thousand fifteen. To get to make the World Series run, well, at least they can say they won a World Series, yeah. and they'll see it again in ninety some years. Thing, same thing the Royals can say. At least they can say they won a World Series out of it. So I think <laughs> I, so I think Rizzo is gone for sure. I hate it, but I think Chafin and uh, and Kimbrel are probably gone too. Um, Kimbrel's one of my favorite players, so I hate that. But I would say Kimbrel's probably gone. And then reunite uh, him in Atlanta, please. Yeah. Yes, please. I, would, I would own a Kimbrel Braves jersey. But so I think I think the Cubs have high hopes with Bryant's contract going out, Rizzo's contract going out, that Baez's contract going out. I I think they have high hopes if they deal those guys, they can re-sign them, like the Yankees did with Chapman in 2015 for the Cubs is that they traded Chapman to the Cubs for a bunch of farm players, and then as soon as that season was over, Yankees re-sign him. It was like a, your perfect loan scenario. I think the Cubs have high hopes that's what happens, but I think if Bryant goes to Atlanta, New York Mets, Oakland, somewhere like that, and the they Phillies. make a push, Phillies, yeah. Like, I mean, it depends what... If Bryant loves Chicago enough, he wants to come back, or whether he likes winning right now. It, so it just depends. Um, some of these young well, you guys... Don't have to, you don't have to go to a win-right-now situation if you're Bryant, but you could go to a win-maybe-in-the-next-five-years. The Cubs aren't in that win-maybe-in-the-next-five-years category at the moment. So it just depends. I think, <laughs> I think Baez has it made, Chicago, even though I'm not the biggest Baez fan... I think that if he has it his way, he'll probably stay because he, he's the face of the Cubs right now. Um, Brian's kind of moved on from that. Everyone lo- All Cubs fans love KB, but, but Baez is the guy who... And but, like, Brian could, could still be holding bad blood, too, because his contract lasted longer than it should have. If you remember back to his rookie year, the Cubs didn't start him till late April because that delay, he didn't get a year of service on his contract at that point. So, like, you know, that could have potentially been like, hey, you guys trapped me here for longer than I should have or started my deal later. That yeah, they paid him now. all the time, though. That does, it does happen but a lot. Could, you could hold a chip on your shoulder that long, too, if you really wanted to. And I, I hate to say it. I, I, I hate to say it because I, I have a Rizzo jersey, T-shirt jersey. That's as far as I've got with my collection of him. But Rizzo's been since 2015 has been so medium okay he's been he's been good he hasn't been great that i i feel like so if rizzo goes if he's traded i don't want him to go to new york please please send him to another team that i kind of like send him to the braves send him to the the a's would be fine I, which they have olsen they're not going to pick him up but send him somewhere that's not a bunch of scumbags and that would be fine with me but it it's probably Rizzo's time. So to go. basically, anywhere but New York, Boston, or LA. Yes, the Cardinals don't need him either. We got Goldie. Are the Cardinals selling? Um, or are they just kind of stay? Are they are they buying or are they just staying put? They won't sell. They're they're staying put. I I think they're staying put. They won't make too many moves. They might do some minor league stuff, but like it's. The Cardinals' season got derailed. They have seven starting pitchers on the injured list right now. You just don't come back from that. It's you know, so yeah, it's, they're, it's they're too having, many people at one position to go out. Yeah. yeah, and so they're you know, and I'm not saying they would have broken down doors and been you know a 90 win team this year. 
but it wasn't out of the realm of possibility from the win 86 and screw around winning the central at 86. So, but I don't see that happening now. There's just too many injuries and I don't think they're going to sell because they never really got to see what this version of the team would do with all those injuries. So and, and we'll, that's, we'll that's my thing with the, with the Cardinals, they're probably not sellers, but say they end up being sellers and then the Cubs more than likely being sellers is that both of these teams competed in the, now it may end up being 15 game gap. Who knows? But at all-star break, it was a six, seven game gap between them and the Brewers. If the Cardinals aren't to their, you know, their best starting pitcher is their seventh starting pitcher, or eighth starting pitcher in the rotation, or, you know, the Cubs don't hit a, a God awful streak. They're both in it. You know, they're both still right there. The Reds as well. The Reds aren't any really any better off than the Cubs and Cardinals are. And you don't hear any talk about them being sellers. So, you know, the Cubs are probably doing it because they have a bunch of free agents coming up. Those big names are free agents. But the Cardinals, by all means, should not sell. They're not. They are those five starting pitchers away from being right there with the Brewers. I mean, so all if, these teams are... All these teams we're talking about, the Braves, the Cubs, the Cardinals, those two divisions are dumpster fires. <laughs> they are the two dumpster fires of the MLB. But they're also going to be the ones that surprise you and get scrappy in the playoffs. Like, yeah, the, whichever Brewers, team gets hot. The Brewers and, are 16 and, games above 500 right now. The Brewers, the Brewers, Brewers got healthy at the right up. time. Yellick yeah, is they've healthy. Been, they've like, been playing well. Or, Brewers are legit. Kai, watching this Braves team – was like watching the 2016, 17, 18, 19 Cubs to me. So much talent, and they just can't seem to put it together. Well, the Braves haven't been able to be on the field all at the same time this year, too. I mean, they've had an injury yeah. bug as well. They haven't, and so they had injuries, and then they, you know, they brought some people up from the minor leaguers. Some of those guys are starting to hit their stride. Like, the Braves have a plus if you take any stock and run differential. About a month ago, they were even. Now they're up to plus 40. Freddie Freeman was hitting 230 a month ago. He's hitting 300 now. They're starting to kind of hit their stride. Now, they still are missing a closer. Craig, Craig Kimbrell would be perfect. But bringing Craig Kimbrell into that bullpen would take it from very mediocre to very good because all it does is pushing, it pushes everybody else down the line one. Now their closer becomes the setup guy, and their setup guy becomes the seventh inning guy. One guy like Craig Kimball can change it, change your whole bullpen dramatically. And the Mets haven't really been playing that good, so the Braves should buy. And they will because the GM has taken so much heat for letting Mark Melanson sign for the Padres for $1.5 million on a one-year deal. One of the worst decisions I've ever seen as a GM. Dude's got like 30-some saves and never... Led anybody to believe that he wouldn't be good. And he think, signed for like $2 million for a year. How do you think the Cubs feel about trading off you Darvish now? Well, maybe not right now, but, but he at least three weeks ago. At least you Darvish had some injuries that said, okay, maybe he's not the guy. Mark Melanson has been solid for five years. Rock solid bullpen arm. You're saying Melanson. I've never heard it pronounced like that. I've always heard Melancone. That's Melanson. Tomato, oh, tomato. No. Yeah, I, same thing. I, I just never tomato. heard it. Uh, so before we run out of time, I want to let Kelsey get, you know, some football talk in so he doesn't just pop like a balloon. Rodgers and Watson, go at it. Have your, have I your mean, I, NFL. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, uh, he'll be there for this year, it sounds like, um, by the news that broke today. Um, but it doesn't sound like he'll be there next year. I, I was thinking about this, though. What if the Packers make the Super Bowl this year, whether they win or not? Will Rodgers be there next year, or will he just be same old Rodgers and say, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, town, leave Green Bay? This Aaron yeah. Rodgers story has a real feel of like going back to your ex-girlfriend to me. <laughs> I, I just don't see it working out very well. You know what's yeah. funny is I think that once the season starts, I think no one's even going to blink. Like, it's not even going to matter. And then once Maybe. it's the end of the season yeah. and then they lose in the NFC Championship game or something, Rodgers will blame the Packers again. And it'll be, man, they didn't surround me with anything ever. And I, I'm the most I, unfortunate quarterback of all time. I just don't see how you can be so, nope, I'm out. 
I'm out. I'm out of this. You guys can do the same thing every every year. And then all of a sudden be like, well, I guess I'll play. Like, you can't tell me that he's going to give his 100% if he still has the same mindset that he did two weeks ago. There's just no I way. Think, I think he was a lot of talk. I think he wanted out of Green Bay, but I don't think there was ever. I, I think don't he know was just he was trying to strong arm him. Yeah. Doesn't it kind of make it the locker room kind of awkward, though? I yeah. mean, that's got to be I mean, an awkward situation. And has Devontae Adams, is he showing up now because Rodgers is there? Or what's going on there? Do you put like, Rodgers and Devontae has... Adams in a package to the Texans? Say, hey, what do you Deshaun got? Deshaun Watson. You know? If Deshaun will play for Green Bay. Yeah. I think Deshaun just they wants to make the Houston, NFC Championship you know? game a lot. <laughs> Everyone this also said Deshaun... has dumpster fire written all over it. The Green Bay Packers. Yeah, without Devontae Adams. I could be Adams. wrong. I don't know. They, I mean, their their defense is good. Their yeah. Aaron Jones is good. They, I mean, honestly, this is the thing that's crazy. I understand why Rodgers is mad, but Green Bay has as good a team as they've ever had around Rodgers. Uh, one of the best receivers in the NFL. One of the best running backs in the NFL. One of the best defenses in the NFL. What are you? Just go play. Just go win. Yeah, uh, yeah Rodgers is in a perfect situation to succeed. They have a and great running have game. Maybe the best O line in the NFL too. Last year. Like they were definitely top five. I don't send yeah, him to the you... Jets. He'll realize how perfect he had. It. Yeah, that's. I wish they would have just <laughs> traded him. That's what it, he wants to act like a diva. Trade his ass. When they draft your replacement, and he, you have to walk into the QB room every day with him. Like that might have something to do with but it. But you've also got to be understanding. He Aaron Rodgers is not a dumb guy. Like you have to be understanding that eventually they have to get a replacement. And but if anybody's going to Rogers and yeah. Brian Favre, <laughs> yeah, if anybody's going to understand that, it's going to be Rogers because they did it to him with Favre. Like he's going to see how much struggle that put on Favre, and then he's like, "Well, this sucks. Why'd you do it to me?" You're only yeah. good as your backup quarterback. You shouldn't. I mean, that should never I, have been a big deal to anybody. I do think the Packers should have went to him and said, "Hey, we might draft a quarterback this year." I yeah, do we, think that would have been a good thing to do. That's the same thing the Chiefs did Alex Smith. Like, I do think that would have been a good thing. Your to franchise do. player deserves but that. That being said, that being said, Aaron Rodgers has taken this to astronomical levels. Like, it's it's been blown way out of proportion. So, you that's a good point. Like Kelsey, you're in management. I'm in management. When you're dealing with your people, Carl, Carl you're in management. management. You keep to be. out of courtesy to them. You keep them in the boat on things like that. Like, yeah, you don't have to, but that should be a collaborative effort. I mean, discussion, not blindsided. Yeah. And who knows what went on behind closed doors? I mean, only they really know. So, so you see Watson getting traded soon? Uh, I I think that's a weird situation too because I understand why he showed up to camp. Because he wants to get paid, but everyone says he's at camp in good spirits, still saying he wants to get traded. So is that another blowing smoke situation? Like, is no. he just gonna Watson wants the- out. Watson I mean, there was a out. lot of news today that the Texans are actually listening to offers now. So yeah, five there's five picks and or player starting player five high picks and or st- uh, starting caliber players. Rogers wants out too. But I I believe that Rodgers would actually swallow once the season starts. I th- I could see Rodgers putting it all behind him, playing good. Watson just wants out. He wants out of Houston. Yeah, Watson's probably going to have a mysterious toe injury come week one and can't. Speaking play. of dumpster fires, that's Houston. There's nothing around Watson right no, now. There's nothing comparable to um, Jets. I, I don't know. I mean Zach Wills. Is Watson even going to be eligible to play? We don't. We're not even sure yet. I mean, there's still a, a lot of lawsuits going down right now. As NFL hasn't made any decisions, like who knows if he's even going to play this year? If he doesn't play, they might go on sixteen or on seventeen. At at work, they got the Tyrod other day, Taylor. So at work the other day, just your gut reaction: Who are the two worst teams in the NFL this season? Gut reaction: Jets. Jets. I'm gonna Man. go Texans. Ooh, the Lions are the worst. They're oh, they're bad. The Lions are pretty bad. Um, 
Jaguars. Urban Meyer, I don't think is going to do it. But anyway, Jaguars, Jaguars and Jets were the two I, that we came up with. It were. It might be Lions and Texans. I mean, Deshaun Watson could keep the Texans from being the worst, but it I don't depends think depends whether Watson Deshaun play plays or not. If Deshaun plays, they're not the worst. I don't think you know, given what the NFL has done in the past, I don't think Deshaun Watson's going to play this year. I don't. I don't see how he does. I mean, he's got like thirty allegations against him right now. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it all turns out. But um, so keep an eye on the MLB trade deadline. <laughs> the MLB trade deadline this weekend, or this the end of this week. Um, we'll keep an eye on the Olympics too. Watch the Olympics. They're fun to watch, people. They really, really are. They only happen every four years. Like, it's it's fun. I know the show pony is like the 100-meter dash and all that, but, like, all these other people work their butts off to get there. And it is fun to watch some of those other sports. So give those a watch. Um, as always, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. We really appreciate anybody that watches this. Uh, drop a comment. You know, who do you think is going to be the worst team in the NFL this year? You know, is – Giannis on the six right track. Six more Sundays without coach. football. Six more Sundays without football. Is is Giannis on track to be, you know, a GOAT? Can a power forward be a GOAT? Any of the questions that we kind of throw around, don't be afraid to answer those for us in the comment section. So until next time, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, be good out there and make sure to tell your grandma to watch Simone Biles. <laughs>